Hello and welcome to East Carolina University and our always tell all tips and tricks session as a part of ECU new student orientation. My name is Ashley Cook and I am an orientation assistant this summer. We appreciate you joining us today. Today we're going to cover some tips and tricks that we as always think are important that you know. This session will be recorded and will be archived and available on the ECU YouTube page after our session has ended. In order to make sure that we are following accessibility guidelines, the archived ses recorded session will be closed captioned. If further accommodations are required, please contact the Office of Disability Services. I would like to start today by introducing my fellow staff members. On camera with me today, we have Ben, Carrington, and Justice. We're all going to be presenting the parts that we think are important. Um, and we're all going to be in the chat if you need us. So a quick reminder that our contest on Instagram ends tonight at midnight. Also, please keep sending in your photos for the con virtual convocation to wiserj20 at ecu.edu. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. Oops, not that one. I don't know why I didn't pull that one. Okay. So what you really need to know when coming to college. So I made this slide. So the dining hall is actually really good. So you might hear some some people say mm, dining halls not so hot. I highly disagree. I think the dining hall provides a lot of options and they're great options. So they do um, kind of themed days like meatless Monday. So when you go into the dining hall, you will most likely see more vegetables and more rice instead of meat. Um, you have taco Tuesdays, one of my personal favorites, fried chicken Wednesday. That is super popular and there will be a line out the door for that and then um, ECU dining also does fresh food Fridays where they will give you kind of like a sample of some fresh food um, whether it be like an apple slice or you know like avocado toast or something new like that they also do themed nights um, so they have like Mardi Gras where they serve like Cajun food and rice and beans and some spicy foods um, they do food from different countries, so like say they choose Italy, so they could do like fancy pizza and different kinds of pasta and bread um, and things like that that you would think of as when you go, like, go to a certain country. Um, they also have a Halloween themed event where they, in my experience, have done like orange foods um, and things that incorporate pumpkins. They will have a Thanksgiving feast um, right before we go home for Thanksgiving um where they will serve like turkey and mashed potatoes and green beans and all the good stuff um, and then they will also have special exam hours towards when finals start they'll kind of adjust their hours to make sure that if you are studying late they'll be open a little bit later so that they can accommodate that or that kind of stuff um, so both dining halls have a salad bar which is one of my personal favorite things i love going in there and making a salad that like towers over my plate um, it's a good way to start a meal. Um, they have a pizza bar where they have pizza. Normally it is cheese, pepperoni, and then like a specialty pizza. Um, they both have a smoothie bar, but then um, up on, on College Hill, Todd Dining Hall does do protein shakes, which is a new thing they're advertising, which I think is super cool. Um, all of them have soda machines, and then there will be a cereal and milk station in case you're feeling to have breakfast. For dinner and all of that is via ecu dining services why is it not oh too much there we go okay um so the next thing um my theme is kind of food so which is very important to me so i made sure it's something i highlighted so um chick-fil-a has times where it's less busy I know that everybody loves Chick-fil-A, so you kind of kind of have to find the times where it's less busy, but saying like on a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday when your class gets out at 9.50, it's going to be kind of packed because everybody's class gets out at 9.50. But if you like get out of class early, say like 9.30 because your professor's nice and they let you out, then that might be a good time. But it's something you're going fi to have to figure out like the more that you attend class and the more that you go to Chick-fil-A. So like I learned last year, for example, after my um, 10.30 class, which got out at 11.15, if I waited until 11.45, the line was shorter. So I kind of 
found that as a trick. Um, keep in mind, it's going to be kind of rare for you to get in and out of a restaurant in 10 minutes. So just keep track of your time. Um, ECU dining services are super fast, but sometimes the lines get a little long. Um, and that's nobody's fault. Everybody just loves the restaurant. Um, so just like make sure to keep track of time. Not again. Um, where to find snacks. So the pod markets are located in the Bait Building, West End Dining Hall, and the Galley on College Hill. And they're great places to buy a quick snack or a Scantron. So I always tell students that this is kind of like a, like a mini gas station kind of thing where you would walk in and you have like the drink coolers, and then like a snack area where it offers like a whole bunch of different snacks um, and you can buy a scantron pencils um, a blue book if you have a writing intensive class stuff like that um, so it's kind of like a like a quick option to get a snack um, and then in Wright plaza which is the brick corridor um, near the academic buildings there is a starbucks and they're pretty fast um, and a snack station i mentioned that snack station because it's in the middle of the restaurant so it's a little bit faster if you're on that side of campus um, we also do have starbucks in the main student center we have the one in Wright plaza we have the starbucks truck which normally hangs out near the croatan um, on the furthest end of campus and then we also have the one that's enjoying the library which and they're pretty quick if you're looking for like a coffee and a quick snack um, and then there are also vending machines that are placed in the first floors of some buildings um, it's not every building, but it's like every other building that has one. Um, and they're typically like when you walk in the door, they'll be assigned to tell you where they are. It'd be great if this worked with me. I skipped too many slides. There we go. Okay. Um, and then my last one is what Campus Rec has to offer. So Campus Rec is awesome. So I included their website um, and they do a whole bunch of things. They're not like just the gym. So they have outdoor adventure trips, group fitness classes, yoga, Pilates, flag football, lacrosse, and many more. Um, for example, I did intramural bowling with my sorority, which was great. And the Campus Rec did that and it was very organized and it was um, easy to find and we went to the local bowling alley and we talked to the guy in the yellow shirt who was in charge and um, they do a great job of running that. Um, inside the campus rec building, so there's a rock climbing wall, a crossfit area, the weight, the weight room section, um, basketball courts, um, they have an indoor and an outdoor pool. Um, so basically anything fitness related campus rec and wellness is there for you. And then a resource that I think should be used more is the Wellness Center. Um, so they provide services like healthy lifestyle coaching, um, free body mass index, um, body fat assessments. Uh, they do have massage chairs and they do give out free condoms. So they just want to make sure you are safe and that they can help in any way that they can. If this will go to the next slide. I think Justice, this slide is next. If this goes to the next slide, too far. There you go. So, uh, yeah, these are a few slides. Uh, my tips are more based off of personal experience rather than just more facts, because at one point or another, uh, we all were freshmen. So, I feel that. Hearing it from another perspective based on personal experience would be more uh, more meaningful than, you know, just straight up facts. So uh, one of the things I wanted to cover was uh, living in the residence halls. Uh, some of the questions we've been receiving as always is uh, things pertaining to like doing laundry or needing somewhere to study, but, you know, not wanting to leave your residence hall and then just living in a residence hall in general. Uh, as far as the laundry aspect is concerned, um, the washing machines and the dryers that are in the laundry room of each residence hall are free to use for all students living on campus. Uh, and the best thing about that is, one, you're still in your residence hall, and two, you can always uh, get your laundry done when, when you need it done. And it's 
more convenient than having to travel to a local laundromat to do your laundry. And and it's also better because it's also covered in your tuition uh, when you uh, pay for housing. So it's best to leave the quarters at home, like I like to say. And then uh, as far as uh, studying, uh, needing somewhere to study, with, like I mentioned, not wanting to leave your residence hall. Uh, the residence halls, uh, they all have study rooms on the ground floor, or if you don't understand what I mean, it's more the first floor of each residence hall that's available for you to use. Um, and then if you're living on College Hill, and I, I like to point out the college to College Hill because I did live there at one point in time during my freshman year, they have a study area called the Underground, uh, which is located in the basement of Legacy Residence Hall. Uh, there, they'll have more study study areas that you can use, and then I believe they have the Peer Academic Clear Office. Am I correct, Ashley? Yes. Yes. So uh, they'll, there's a lot of uh, opportunities for you to study on the Hill if you happen to be living in that area. And then the one thing I like to point out to new students is get to know your RA and then uh, get to know your floor mates too, because it's a really great way to make connections and make new friends uh, during the first days that you're on campus. And the best part about making those connections is you get to learn diff uh, different about different people based on their uh, backgrounds and all different sorts of walks of life. Uh, next slide. I'm trying, it's not working. <laughs> there you go. So this is more of the personal side. So commuting around campus, um, one thing I like to point out to the new students is definitely take time to learn all the bus routes and where they go. and I have a story of that actually. So it was a few days after I moved in uh, freshman year and I got settled. Uh, I think one night I had decided to try Todd Dotting Hall for dinner and uh, I decided, you know what, I didn't want to walk up there, so let me take a bus. The downfall of that was I didn't pay attention to the bus routes and where they went. And so Instead of taking the 301 goal, which would take me to College Hill, I ended up taking the 304 campus shuttle, which took me up to Uptown Greenville. And let's just say it was the worst hour of my life because one, I got lost and I had no idea where I was. And then two, uh, my phone was at like 15%. So I had like, like 30 minutes max to get directions and one to get back on campus and two to get to Todd uh, in time for dinner. So definitely pay attention to uh, the bus routes. Download Next Bus if if you must, but definitely download that app because hopefully it'll save you one uh, the pain of you know having to figure out where you're supposed to go, and then two so that you, you don't get lost. And then another thing I like to emphasize is to to new students is take a walk around campus sometime during the first few days that you're on campus, whether that be like after you move in and get settled or, you know, maybe the day before your classes start. And the best thing about that, it, one, it helps you get a feel of where everything is, uh, like join a library, the academic buildings, and uh, everything within uh, within the campus. And if you need to, um, definitely use a map to help you get around, um, even during the first day of class. Um, if you don't really know, let's say, where, uh, where the bait building is and, you have a class in the bait building. You can always uh, use Google Maps or Apple Maps and uh, put it in, and it'll take you right uh, to the bait building uh, with walking directions. So those maps definitely do come in handy. And then the last thing that I have is uh, definitely don't go anywhere alone, because like I mentioned before, it is easy to uh, it's very easy to get lost if you don't know where you're going. So and I like to emphasize the buddy system is key. Uh, during the few few days on campus, even if you don't walk with somebody, at least make sure someone knows where you are in, in the event that you, you do get lost. All right, y'all. So I wanted to take a moment and talk about some of the things I didn't focus on too much when I came into school. Am I coming up in the video? That's fine. Um, so if you go to join a library, the, Although it says library, it has a lot more than just books. Um, one thing I didn't know as a freshman that I wish I knew sooner is you can check out everything from cameras to laptops, laser pointers, calculators, and a lot more. Um, I know someone's checked out a projector from there. I mean, they have a crazy list. And if you see at the bottom of this slide, there's a link. They'll be updating that regularly, so feel free to check it out. Um, 
the library has both study rooms for big groups. I think you can have up to like 10 people in a study room. So if you want like a big conference or group project, it's perfect for that. They also have individual rooms that have just like one or two chairs in them. Um, and you can book those months in advance. They do get pretty busy around uh, finals. But apart from that, uh, I highly recommend utilizing those study rooms. We also have uh, the University Writing Center and the Math Cave. In the library, the writing center, I can't recommend enough. If you struggle with uh, English, especially writing those long papers like me, the writing center is just the place to go. They'll give you one-on-one -on -one help, uh, look over, give you grammar corrections, everything. Um, and something I didn't even realize we had until last year was uh, the special collections, which I believe is on the third floor of the library. And it has a great extensive history of Eastern North Carolina. So if you're like a history buff or you just think it's kind of cool, I mean, they have a cannon they pulled out of the ocean and I think it's one of the oldest. You can fact check me on that. Go check out the library. Um, and they just have a great collection. I highly recommend taking a look and exploring it. It's a really big library and there's a lot to it, a lot more than just all the books. Um, and Ashley, if you want to go to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, another thing, so if you're like me in high school, you didn't study for classes too, too much. You kind of showed up, you did good, and you just got by. So when you come to college and you hear professors have office hours, you're like, I have to go spend more time with this person. And no, thank you. I was mistaken. I was so mistaken. Office hours are so much more than just that extra tool only the smart kids use. It's one-on-one -on -one time with the person who's going to be making your test. It's hands-on tutoring. It's the best tutoring you can ask for, honestly. Every professor is required to have office hours weekly, and it's just a time that you can find them on campus in a specific spot and get help with anything you need. Um, a lot of the times professors will go over test questions with you, uh, questions you have from classwork or homework. Uh, you get example problems that one-on-one -on -one help, and you build that professional relationship. One thing that's super important when you come to college is building those relationships. I've gotten jobs on campus just from knowing professors and building that relationship and them giving me strong recommendations. If at the beginning of the semester you want to know how to find your professor's office hours, it'll be on the syllabus that every professor gives you, which is basically just a contract between you and your professor. Um, if you look on the right side under office hours, I have uh, an example, so Dr. Petey. Uh, a lot of offices will be in the sleigh building. That's just where we house a lot of them. Um, and if you look at the very bottom, it says office hours MW. That's Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 to 1230 and by appointment. So if you have a class during a professor's office hours, a lot of them will schedule appointments with you. So they're all flexible. I mean, from a professor's point of view, the students who show up to their office are the ones who care the most and are trying. And the professor is going to be a lot more willing to help you out if, you, if they see that you're trying. Um, so absolutely utilize those office hours because it can make or break a grade in a class. Okay, and I'm going to talk about personal documentation. Um, so oftentimes you'll find that you need um, these things listed right here, which is like your social security number, your medical card, all your insurance information, it's like dental. Um, if you're not doing them through ECU, um, a photo ID and um, an emergency contact information. My parents, they just put it in like a, a little envelope for me to have. And then they also bought me a safe, um, just a small one. And I just stored it away somewhere um, in my room. Um, and these are very, very important to bring to college. Um, you are growing up, you are, you know, considered an adult now, um, and you're going to find out that you need that stuff when you're applying for a job on or off campus, um, or like, um, when you're filling out something for a, a club, you may need this information. Um, so it's just great to go ahead and have it on you, um, just in case. Um, also stuff like your, if you, um, like your car information if you're signing up for a parking pass just to go ahead and have this stuff all on you um but yeah and i do suggest locking this stuff up in a little safe um they're sold almost everywhere now um some of them don't come with a lock some of them do just go ahead and look up and see if they do or not um just get you a small um lock but yeah i think this is really 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 important for you guys to 
um, have. I I use mine. I mean, I, I got a safe. My parents got me a safe, and I use mine um, just um, just for safety. Because even though you may know your roommate, um, their intentions might not always be um, brought to light immediately. So just to protect you and feel personal information, I think is important to have. Okay, so now that our presentation is done, we can open it up to any questions. If anybody has any questions about anything we have said, anything we presented on, um, anything you would like to know, um, we're here to answer pretty much any question. So I will leave that open to y'all. But so I'll give you a few minutes to think about it. Um, I know I learned stuff from what you guys said was important. Um, I always forget the Joiner Library has the, um, I call it the old and rare books. Um, uh, yeah. but I've, and I've never been there. I tell people all about it all the time. And I'm like, yeah, there's a canon, but I've never actually been there. I was bored and I was walking around the library last semester and I found it. And I was like, this seems pretty cool. And I started walking around. It's actually like. It's like a little mini museum inside the library. It's really cool. I forgot to mention the library has um, a 3D printer. Students can access the buttons. Uh, you get a certain amount you can make each year, business cards. Um, there's a few other resources. I mean, there's just so many resources in the library. I hate to sound like a spokesperson for it, but like I neglected that for a few years. It really is pretty awesome. Yeah, as an educator, like I love the teacher resource center where you can make the buttons and um, I mean, I've gone in there and they have a laminator. Um, they can make you posters. Um, they have like the cool die cuts. Like if you have to like make a fancy title on a bulletin board is what I use it for or um, a project. So I love the teacher resource center and the majority of it is like you bring your own paper and it's technically free, but you have to have your one card and just to get in there. So, yeah. But. All right. I don't see any questions, so we're going to wrap this up. Let me find. There we go. Okay. So thank you so much for joining us today. As a reminder, this session will be available on the ECU official YouTube page. We hope you'll join us for our next session with Campus Living at 2 p.m. on Monday that will cover housing and some housing questions you may have as move-in starts. Feel free to use our website at orientation.ecu.edu if you would like more information. Thank you again for joining us and have a great rest of your day.